I could go on, but uh, I'm afraid you will uh, quit. Okay. You don't see Martin Scorsese. You don't see Oliver, Oliver Stone started with us, but you don't see him playing a clarinet. <laughs> he's, he's sucking up to Putin, right? He's sucking Putin's dick, right? You know yeah. that. He started. I discovered him. Okay. In second grade. In second grade. And he worked on... Uh, he's in uh, my first uh, movie that played in a movie theater. Okay. So that's some... Um, Start, um, so um, what inspired you to make another um, Shakespeare-based film um, like a quarter of a century after Tromeo and Juliet? It's a very good question. Um, uh, the Tempest is my favorite Shakespeare play. Mm -hmm. It's druggy. It uh, has magic. It's uh, got a monster. Um, mm -hmm. It's got lovers. All the world loves a lover. I love the Revel speech. I, I, uh, I, I learned it when I was in uh, eighth grade mm -hmm. in uh, school. And uh, my mother took me to see The uh, Tempest when I was about nine years old. Mm -hmm. I saw it with uh, uh, Maurice Karanowski uh, and uh, Fabulous. And the fact I, I modeled my hair as much as I could. I had the makeup people try to duplicate uh, mm -hmm. the uh, original. The, uh, there's a black and white uh, 16 millimeter version of that particular Tempest mm -hmm. that was on TV. But I saw it in uh, Stratford-on-Avon in uh, Connecticut. Any rate, uh, I wanted to wait till I was old and uh, losing. Uh, it's all a Prospero. The Tempest is all about yeah. losing power and and uh, losing your marbles a little bit. And uh, it's got uh, you know magic. He's a magician, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, movies are magic. And the monster Caliban and the Tempest and uh, there's some uh, room for uh, some action. So uh, I love the Tempest. It's def I would have done it back instead of Tromeo and Juliet, but I wanted to feel. Mm -hmm. what Prospero feels, the, the loss of uh, one's uh, faculties. You know, he, mm -hmm. you can see in the play, he's, he's smart, but he's definitely getting weaker. And he's, mm -hmm. uh, he's been kicked out of his own land. Uh, basically, I can relate to that because the movie industry has gone from a almost, well, I, as I would say it's gone from an oligopoly to, a, 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 to some kind of fascist... Uh, I don't even want to, elite. It's not even an oligopoly. It's yeah. so I, I and whereas uh, trauma could compete, uh, the laws have all been changed. So I no longer have my domain. It's the same as Prospero. Now I'm uh, deep in the reeds of the underground. I'm in Tromaville, where, mm -hmm. where uh, I'm banished to deep in the undergrounds. I mean, I've always been in Tromaville, but <laughs> Prospero is banished to uh, uh, you know the island. But in uh, in our movie, he's banished it. He's he sets up in trauma. He's had to flee. Same thing. And he wants revenge. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I was reading how um, the film is described as the most ambitious project in trauma's history. So could you describe how that is so? Sure. Well, it's a, uh, a, it, if you look at it, it has uh, whales. Jump, yeah. it's, uh, we have whales doing the thing in Flipper. I don't know if anybody got it. Not Flipper. Uh, uh, Free Willy. 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 Yeah, I, did you get that? Yeah, so, there's, a, there's yeah. a line, Free Willy. Oh, I think I stuck that in, in post-production because uh, Free Willy, if everybody who saw that is probably 100 years old. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so we got that. Uh, we've got that boat. Uh, we've got uh, a storm that's terrific. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we've got uh, lots of different uh, uh, locations. A huge, we've got uh, 2,000, if you, the end credits are longer than a, a typical feature of length movie. Uh, and it's all fan-fueled. It's all fan-fueled. So for half a million dollars, you're getting a $50 million movie. Mm -hmm. uh, the, um, the, uh, the special effects, there's the uh, dick chicken, right? You don't yeah. just uh, go out and find that in 7-Eleven. Uh, uh, you know, these things cost a lot of money. All those, uh, there's a, a lot of, uh, there's pro again, there's millions of dollars of, uh, of practical effects. The guy, in fact, the guy from California who did the uh, most of the practical effects, mm -hmm. uh, he is uh, did the big some of the big uh, Hollywood uh, Iron Man type stuff. <laughs> but he also did uh, uh, I, uh, Sharknado movies, mm -hmm. and he's a huge trauma fan. So he was he created all these. Uh, penises and weird things. And, uh, you know, we con collaborated on it, but he came up with a lot of that stuff. 
And then the other major special effects guy um, was Doug Sackman, who's worked for us uh, for many, many years. Mm -hmm. uh, he started with us when he was 16. But uh, most of the people on, on the movie uh, had worked for us or were fans. And mm -hmm. they came from England, from Iceland, from England, France, Canada, Montreal, Toronto, California, South America. I mean, it was the United Nations. The director of photography was from Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. The main uh, cameraman was from uh, Denmark. Uh, and they all came to make a movie in which they believed a movie. And they knew it was, uh, you know, a lot of people said you couldn't do it. Uh, uh, to be honest, if you read that script, I think it, you probably at first glance would not think you could pull <laughs> off all that stuff for half a million dollars. Mm -hmm. And I think it was less than half a million dollars. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, it's a big deal. I mean, all our movies have, you know, uh, in fact, Mitch mentioned to me, it was great to see a, an independent Mitch uh, Davis, mm -hmm. the best curator in the world. He mentioned to me, he said, wow, it's so great to see an independent film opening up and using all these people and things. And, uh, uh, you know, most of the uh, independent uh, genre films today, a very small cast, mm -hmm. one location. And, uh, uh, you know, and, uh, and they're great. I'm not mm -hmm. knocking them. Uh, Green Room was totally fabulous. And, uh, uh, you know, there's some wonderful films. Mm -hmm. But uh, ours are, and that's why ours are rough around the edges, because we want to make, we want them to be, Big. Mm -hmm. We want a lot of stuff going on. I have lots of people need to see my movies two or three times because, and it needs to be seen. I make them for the move for the big screen, mm -hmm. right? Uh, Sean, I make them for the big. So there's all this stuff going on in the background that you can't really see on the small screen, and uh, uh, <laughs> a lot of the lighting gets uh, distorted uh, when it gets smaller. But uh, what the hell? If it wasn't for uh, the small screen, uh, Troma Now, our, our uh, streaming service, has been going on for three years. And since we just got kicked off of our 300 free film uh, YouTube channel that's been up for since the beginning of YouTube uh, with 800,000 subscribers has just been uh, canceled, de deleted by YouTube yeah, because sounds... of c community standards. So uh, Troma Now, if you fans want to help us, uh, please subscribe to Troma Now. Yeah. So and uh, and the first month is free. First oh. month is free okay. if you want to see uh, free movies. So that actually leads to my next question is that um, Sorry. Uh, is throughout the film, you kind of like speak out against so social justice warriors who kind of like complain about anything and everything they deem offensive. So how does that relate to you and trauma's experiences, such as the whole YouTube betting? <laughs> well, that just happened. So, uh, but I saw it coming. That's why we created Amazon and YouTube. I've made a little documentary called uh, independent artists versus fascist uh, media cartel. Mm -hmm. uh, no, corrupt media cartel. Independent art. You can see it on Troma Now for free. Okay. The link is there for free. Uh, you don't even have to sign up. Uh, and uh, it, it lays out how YouTube and uh, uh, Amazon have double standards compared to, for the. They'll let all sorts of perversion uh, from the majors and mainstream and, and from the people who don't compete. Uh, with the mainstream, that's okay. But the the companies that do compete with the mainstream, uh, they go after. So um, uh, part of it uh, is that. But uh, I ha I went to Yale University, and Yale has become this place where it's not about an education. It's not about broadening your horizons. It's not about uh, uh, sophistication. It's not about debate. Uh, when I went to school. I remember my high school, uh, my Kami grandmother uh, telling me the Vietnam War was wrong. So I went to seventh grade. I told my friends, you know, Vietnamese War, and here I gave reasons. Uh, and uh, and they, you know, they were, wow, that's, wow, you really, I was the only one. But they didn't uh, abuse me. Whereas at Yale, this, uh, the, the Yale University is now sending out letters to their uh, students telling them what's acceptable to wear for Halloween. Don't wear a Mexican hat. That's why I put the Mexican yeah. hat in the movie. And I actually had in the opening, uh, the opening, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, <laughs> protest, the opening yeah, protest, protest where uh, Brasco is uh, being, uh, no, not where, where the woman, where his wife kills herself yeah. uh, and the baby gets splattered. Uh, I'm, uh, I, I, there was an actual line from uh, one of these Yale uh, lynchings of uh, a professor whose wife wrote a letter to Yale saying, I don't think 
that that open letter. I don't think that the Yale students, the smartest in the world, is, need to be told how to dress for Halloween. Uh, uh, Yale said that Elmo, where's Elmo is okay. So, <laughs> and it's video. You can go on like, mm -hmm. I somehow, somebody sent it to me and I just got obsessed with it. And uh, so that is a large part inspiration for, and then of course all the canceling that went on. We have one uh, a kind of, a guy who was a, a trauma fan and was friendly with my brother and me, uh, Al Franken from Saturday Night Live, who became a senator. And uh, my my daughter, Lizbeth, worked for him for two years. She was his environmental uh, speechwriter and researcher and uh, said he was so devoted to being a, a, a public servant. And and uh, uh, I have another friend for 50, who was, uh, was a congressman for 30 years. He's a friend for 50 years and told me when he got out, he was poor, but uh, that he, as far as he knows, he's the only uh, senator uh, that's, uh, and congressman that has left the uh, U.S. Congress not a millionaire. You go in as a, you know, whatever, and you come out as a millionaire, and he didn't do that. So it's, here's Al Franken, a real, one of the few public servants who really is trying to help us. They kick him out for a, 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 a photograph from 25 years ago where he's doing <laughs> right. uh, if I was in the Senate, I, I would be lynched. Holy fuck. And this poor professor uh, who's a dean, he's a Nobel winning prize uh, winner, uh, uh, scientist, also a best selling uh, writer, uh, author of at least one best selling book. And uh, it just, you know, a major, major superstar professor. And, and this mob comes to where he's uh, living. The uh, they call them colleges there, They're big buildings, dormitories for students. And the dean is in charge of that particular dormitory. And they, they, this mob shows up and he, and he comes out into the courtyard to talk to them like humans. And they just scream at him, no respect, not even the, he's a, I mean, this is a man who's you know, done something with his life. And these little shits are all, I just want a home. I don't want to do anything. I, want, I don't want to be told, I don't want, I want, I want, I want, I want, I want, you know. Oh, my God. I couldn't believe it. And it's all over the country. It, you know, there's no nuance. You can't, you, there's no, you, you either, you know, it's like Trump. You're either with him or against him. And uh, it's a pity. Everybody is, uh, and, and the big, the reason for that is the American educational system is uh, way, is kind of on a level with, I would guess, you know, Algeria, maybe, or something. You know, I don't, I know Canadian you have good health care and good schools, but yeah. uh, unless you're really rich here, you ain't going to get a good education. Impossible. And even the rich people out in L.A., the people are stupid. You know, you mentioned, uh, you, you mentioned Catcher in the Rye. They don't know what it is. You know, it's, you, there's nothing you can talk about. You have to dumb everything down for them. And they're rich because the educational system is so... Unless you're rich, you ain't going to get a good education. Nor teeth. Teeth. <laughs> Right? My teeth, I'm old. The teeth are thousands of dollars. How? And, and you look at Americans now, half of them have no teeth or they're missing teeth. The other half that's on opioids also missing teeth. I mean, really. And that's kind of what the whole hashtag Shakespeare's shitstorm is about. So, um, right? The opioid, the, yeah. the far, big farmer, big farmer shoving pills down our throats from the time uh, I got out of college. There are three generations of children who eating their obese, uh, making uh, Fruit Loops in the morning while they're watching those shit uh, morning shows with their parents, with their parents who have no education. They're hearing about, oh, the pills. Yeah, you got you to gotta, you gotta take a fart. Uh, oh, there's a pill for that. You got a hangnail? Take a pill. That, so it's, it's normalized the taking of pills. And now what do you have? <laughs> and if you can't get the pills anymore, then you go to opioids. So uh, that was a big deal for me. So I guess that's where the safe spatia came from. <laughs> exactly. That's right. We yeah. combined the two. That a good, good point. The safe spatia. My daughter Lily Hayes uh, Salzberg uh, uh, shot and wrote and shot that uh, commercial. Mm -hmm. And uh, how true it is. Yes, safe spatia. That's right. It's about the big farmer and the <laughs> social justice people. Okay, so um, there's a number of um, songs in the film. Uh, who wrote them and were there a plan to include more? 
Uh, no, those were, <clears throat> Shakespeare had songs in, in his movies. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I wrote the lyrics for uh, all but one. Uh, mm -hmm. And a guy came in to audition. We have a very, very long audition period. Mm -hmm. And a wonderful guy uh, came in, he, a major trauma fan, I'm a lark. He's a librarian uh, for the Morgan Museum. Uh, Morgan, uh, yeah, a, a museum in New York, a very good museum. And uh, I think he's now moved on to something else. But he played ma mandolin. So uh, when we when we audition for the first time, we tell people do something. Doesn't matter. Do anything you want. You got three minutes, uh, and uh, we're going to film it. And then we, if you have some energy, we'll call you back and uh, give you a specific uh, part to read for. So this guy came in and he played the mandolin and he played this tune on the mandolin. And the minute I heard it, I loved it. And uh, uh, he couldn't act for shit, but I loved his uh, music. And he probably could act for shit, but I don't think he was right for anything. And uh, so I contacted him and said, hey, I'd like to use your music uh, in, the, uh, in the movie. Uh, I'm really lazy. Would you mind writing uh, the lyrics? And he wrote the, uh, I'm, you know, uh, <laughs> makes me wet uh, <laughs> lyrics, right? And uh, uh, shit storms making me wet. And uh, she was wonderful. And the way she sang it, I mean, wonderful uh, Kate McGarrigal. Mm -hmm. She's a natural comedian. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that song uh, had nothing to do with, although we did, we did uh, try to uh, arrange, add a better arrangement to it. That's mm -hmm. not perfect. Uh, and it definitely, we didn't do his music justice. Uh, but the other songs, uh, I wrote the lyrics. And, uh, and Philippe Mello in Portugal, a Portuguese guy, a big jazz guy in Portugal uh, wrote, uh, not only scored the film, he scored all the original music is his, mm -hmm. uh, and he and his uh, little jazz group, he got a real orchestra to score the music uh, for his, uh, nothing, basically. Mm -hmm. And uh, and he wrote the, uh, he had an ensemble that wrote the uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, Frank Sinatra guy, uh, Nelson Riddle arrangement for uh, uh, Ferdinand's song, and uh, and then my song. Oh no, my song was written by uh, 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 Count Smokula. I didn't like that. <laughs> okay, okay, Count Smokula wrote it. I did write the lyric. I changed the lyrics around it a bit. Mm -hmm. That's all. Yeah, he wrote it. And uh, that was a hard one to sing. And uh, because I had to talk, uh, I had to stop the song, talk, and then go back into sync. Uh, and that was not so easy. Uh, but Count Smokula, uh, who uh, is not in the film, but he's in a lot of our movies, uh, great guy. And he has written, uh, he wrote the, uh, a Poultry Geist theme song, uh, not the one at the, uh, uh, yeah, he wrote the Poultry Geist uh, theme song. Yeah, great guy. Count Smokula. So, um, Robert Miles, Robert Miles. His real name is Robert Miles. Sorry, I just trying to. Okay. So, so, um, um, so um, what can we expect from um, Troma's future? Well, I'm happy to say um, Mutant Blast, uh, one of my protégés, Fernando Ale, mm -hmm. is terrific. And it played in about 35 uh, very good festivals. Yeah, it played in Toronto last year for the Toronto for the Dark. Oh, good, good. And, um, uh, and then it uh, uh, played in California at Lemley Cinemas and did very well. But then the day, the second week, uh, COVID was declared and we... The director had to go back to Portugal, and I and mm -hmm. others had to go back to New York, uh, go into uh, lockdown. And uh, so it was booked in some other theaters, but everything's been canceled. Mm -hmm. But Mutant Blast can be rented and bought on uh, Troma Now, watch.troma.com. Mm -hmm. If you want to go, uh, you can see watch.troma.com for free first month, mm -hmm. and then uh, it's uh, only $4.99 for the rest of the time. And... Since we have been kicked off YouTube, it would be great if our fans could go there and try to help us out. And it's great. I mean, go look at the comments. They're all positive. I, 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 you know, I don't know. I don't curate trauma now. Uh, we have people who do that. And, you know, I see films there that I'm thinking, oh, it's pretty cerebral. And the fans, they really enjoy the uh, channel. Uh, and I enjoy it. It's a, it's a discovery. It's real art. It comes from the heart. It's not committee made uh, you know it's not uh, mm -hmm. oh let's make a let's make a documentary about frank sinatra right i mean that's great documentary <laughs> but uh, you know you got a committee doing it it's not art it's uh, interesting but it's uh, you know it's not uh, it's not robert flaherty that's for sure 
Yeah. So the point is, <laughs> the point is, we have new movies coming out. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned it. Did I mention Divide and Conquer by Mercedes? No. Uh, the Muse. She had to stop shooting because of. Uh, I told her to stop mm -hmm. shooting, uh, but she'll reconvene hopefully in October. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's some, if it's safe. And then Heidi Moore finished the sequel to her Deadly Dolly, which runs on mm -hmm. Troma now. It's, it's called uh, Divide and Conquer. A very uh, like the first, uh, even more feminist, mm -hmm. uh, and has some themes that uh, wrote into the script. And then uh, there's uh, uh, Liam Regan, who worked on uh, Return to Newcomb High and Return to Return to Newcomb High. He lives in Sheffield, England, mm -hmm. and he uh, came to Iceland. No, he came to Al Albania, where we shot on his own dime, on his own uh, uh, Dublin, on his own, what do you call your thing, loony. Yeah. He came to, to uh, Albania, paid his way, and the guy from Iceland did too. And uh, Liam worked on the movie in Iceland, and then he came to New York to uh, work on the crew. Mm -hmm. And uh, his movie, uh, I'm in his uh, first movie, My my Bloody Banjo, My Bloody Banjo, also on Troma Now. And when I did the uh, two-day monster, uh, two-day master class at Oxford, mm -hmm. right, YouTube says that community standards uh, mean we don't have the right to be seen. Oxford had me out three years ago for two-day master class, mm -hmm. and he took a bus from uh, Sheffield, eight hours, mm -hmm. to see my master class. And uh, so uh, he, I gave him some money to uh, make uh, this uh, Eating Mrs. Campbell, okay. his next film, and very good. It's in, it's in, uh, uh, being edited. He got it, just finished principal photography. May have to do touch-up after COVID, but. Uh, the films that we're making, I don't want them filming because I don't want to. Our three rules of production are safety to humans, uh, you know, that's, uh, then uh, safety to people's property and make a good movie. But safety to humans is much bigger on all the posters. Yeah. To, that okay. are slap, okay, you know, well, I think, put them on I, everything. I think time's up, so I think I'll let you lucky go. Lucky for you. <laughs> lucky for you. Thank you very much.